Okay, uh, welcome. My name's uh, Caroline Sargis and I'm in charge of recruitment at Middlesex University. I am a nurse, um, but I'm also a member of the academic staff. My main role is to um, bring in the student nurses and midwives. So I work with uh, admissions and I work with uh, my colleagues in education liaison uh, to help support students through that process. So I'm here today to talk to you about what it is we're looking for how you can best um, prepare for your, for your process. Some of the information I'll be giving you will also cover my colleagues in other universities as well. Um, so it's, it's about putting you in the best possible position for your nursing midwifery career. So what we're gonna look at is what the sort of things you need to be involved with before you come and attend an interview. All nursing and midwifery students who are shortlisted will be required to attend an interview. We'll also look a bit about the role of the nurse and the midwife to give you an idea of the sort of things that you should be looking at. We'll give you an idea about what the interview is going to include and a little bit about what to expect from the programme and about your nursing midwifery career. Uh, the picture we're showing you there is our my colleagues who've been actively vaccinating throughout the pandemic. So we've been, we've been very busy, not just teaching students, but out in the community as well. So um, I'm assuming that the people that are here today have decided that would like to be a nurse or a midwife. And within that, you're probably thinking about whether you'd like to be an adult nurse or a children and young people's nurse or a mental health nurse. Um, what I really would strongly suggest for anyone who's contemplating nursing or midwifery is to really think about uh, what it means to be a nurse, what the role includes, what types of things you could be involved with when you're qualified, so that you have an idea about where your career would be once you've, you've completed your degree and registered as a nurse or a midwife. Thanks, Natalie. Um, again, here's some more pictures of our uh, staff. So this is some of the things, these are all, um, uh, nearly all of them apart from Jane, that is our registered nurses. So they're academic staff who've maintained their nursing registration. So during the pandemic, some people were, were working in ITU. And then I think that's the Business Design Centre in Islington where we set up the vaccination hub and delivered um, vaccinations to the public. And also we trained the vaccinators as well. So that's just an example of um, some of the work that nurses and midwives can do. So before your interview, obviously you'll need to apply through UCAS. All applications for nursing and midwifery programmes are through UCAS and your uh, school or college will help you with your UCAS application. Uh, some of the questions we get asked about your application are, can you apply for two different fields of nursing or could you apply for midwifery and child nursing? And our advice would always be to you, no, because your personal statement, which is about you, it's got a personal statement for a reason, has to reflect your decision. If you apply for two different programmes, the chances are you won't get shortlisted for either of them because you won't be able to come across as committed to one particular field or of nursing or midwifery. So please, before you get to doing your UCAS application, do your preparatory work. Look at what those nurses do or midwives, what the career opportunities are. So you're really clear when you come to filling in your application. The other thing you may be aware of is that you have in your uh, initial application, you have five choices. You can apply to five different universities. So do your research on that as well. It may be easy for you to get to Middlesex University, which um, some of you will know is at Hendon on the Northern Line, but can you get to your placements? So when you look at applying, look at the trusts that that university is linked to because 50% of your programme is going to be spent in clinical practice, working shifts, uh, working alongside registered nurses and midwives, and you will be working on social hours. So you may well have to be there for seven in the morning. So can you get to your trust for seven in the morning on a Sunday, say, without you having to spend two hours traveling because you're gonna be tired as well. Um, bear in mind that most trusts don't have car parking. So you need to think about public transport and these are sensible decisions to make. So look at the hospitals that are near to you and um, think about traveling to and from, particularly if you may say have children as well because you need to think about your childcare. So these are all decisions that you need to be making before you put in your, your UCAS application. There's lots of help available for completing um, UCAS forms, both from the universities and also from UCAS. There's lots of, of support on YouTube. 
um, about writing a personal statement and the types of things we're looking for. But again, it's a personal statement. It's about you. We want to know about you and why you've made this decision and what you're going to be bringing to the programme and to the profession. Thanks, Natalie. So uh, a lot of the time we're asked about entry requirements. We have slightly different entry requirements for nursing and for midwifery. Midwifery is higher at 120 to 128 tariff points. Um, nursing, that's adult mental health and child nursing is at 112. So we take BTEC, A-levels, access. We also take uh, qualifications gained abroad. Um, uh, so we, we have quite a wide gate for our entry requirements. You must also have English and maths at grade C or four or higher. And we do accept key skills or functional skills for nursing and midwifery. However, we require you to have your GCSEs already passed when you submit your application form because the results for those come out very late in August and we need to make sure we have our numbers before then. We will take functional skills pending because they uh, come out earlier than, than the um, GCSE results. Um, again, all this information is on our website. So if you want to go back and have a look at our entry qualifications, all the information is there. So we work very closely with our partnership trust. So as I said earlier, the course is 50% theory and 50% clinical practice. We sort out your placements. We organize all that for you and we link you to a particular trust. So we try to ensure that the majority of your placements over the three years are with that trust. Your placements will start in year one. And uh, currently the students, the nursing students who start in September, their first placements have been in January. The midwifery students tend to go out earlier. So the trusts that we link with are the Whittington at Archway, the Royal Free, which is at Belsize Park, uh, Chase Farm over at Enfield. We have the North Middlesex um, Enfield, uh, at uh, Tottenham, Edmonton, and then we have two mental health trusts. We have Barnet, Enfield and Haringey and Camden Islington Trust. We also have uh, for midwifery, we also link to uh, Queen's Hospital uh, over at Barking, Havering and Redbridge. So um, we, we will allocate you to your trust and we try to do that through your postcode uh, to, to look at the area where you live. Uh, if you're moving to London to um, to take up a place with us then obviously we take that into account as well so the trusts work with us the trusts provide your clinical placements they provide the supervision for you when you're on your clinical placement um, and that will be by a registered nurse or a registered midwife who will teach you and support you give you feedback make sure you you meet your learning outcomes when you're in clinical placement uh, the academic staff are also very closely linked with our trusts and we work with them when you're out in your placements Okay, so interviews, uh, and the best way to think about having an interview is it's a conversation. It's not about answering questions. It's about you using those questions to give us information about you. You need to think about what is it we, you would like us to know about you? What kind of examples can you give us um, to show your preparation and your understanding? But these are some of the issues that we will be looking at. These are some of the areas we would ask you to consider before you come. And the biggest one, I would really, really urge you to look at this very carefully, and I've mentioned it already, is your knowledge and awareness of midwifery or your chosen field of nursing. Time and time again, people tell us that they've chosen to be a nurse or a midwife because they want to care for people. And that's lovely, and we, we applaud that. However, I would suggest that we all care for people. We all care for our family or friends. We all have a caring nature, and that's why you've you've chosen this profession. But nursing and midwifery is so much more than caring for people. There are other skills that you need, and we would really like to see that you've considered those and can tell us about them. So a, a good place to start would be to look perhaps at the NHS careers website, where people will talk about the types of things they're involved with in their job. There are short films on, on YouTube where people talk about what their working life is like. So it could be talking about a day in uh, children's ITU or um, a day as a community health visitor. So you can see the types of skills we expect. It is not enough to turn up to your interview and say you want to be a nurse because you're caring. You simply won't get any further because that's not what nursing is about. And quite a lot of the time in a, in a high impact emergency situation, 
you don't have time to demonstrate caring skills because you're too busy actually using your nursing skills to look after a patient. So you could be giving um, intravenous fluids, bloods, drugs, you could be monitoring fluid in, input and output. And along with that is complex decision making. So please, if you want to care for people, that's great, but really think about what it means. The other thing you, we'd like you to think about quite carefully as well is the challenges of the course and how you're going to manage them. And there's no getting away from the fact that your three year degree is challenging, academically challenging. You're going to be out in clinical placement where you're going to be dealing with um, difficult situations, emotive, difficult situations, because it's about people's lives and people being vulnerable and looking to you to, to help look after them. So it may be that you come home at the end of the day and you've had a really tough day and you will have, but how are you going to manage that? What can you use to manage it? And if you look on our website, um, we've provided lots of information about the support that we will offer you as a student, not just a nursing midwifery student, but um, there's plenty of support available. So you need to think about the things that you might find difficult. It could be that you, you're really good at time management and academic writing, and that's great, but, are you good at dealing with um, people who would become very poorly very quickly? Um, if you're going to look at children's nursing and midwifery, how are you going to feel if uh, it's not a good outcome? So not every baby survives, not every child survives, but we need you to see, to see that you've, you've thought about how you're gonna manage that and what sort of things you, you would have as your coping strategies. Some people talk about the fact that they haven't been able to get any work experience and we completely understand that in the pandemic, it's very difficult. It's always very difficult to get work experience in hospitals, but we'd like to see you've had experience working with the public, whether that's in uh, charity roles, voluntary roles, even if you've worked in Tesco's, if you've worked uh, in catering, anything like that, anything that's experience of working with others, because then you've got experience of working as part of a team, time management, interpersonal skills. These are all really essential skills in nursing and midwifery. So any experience is good experience. So make sure to mention it. We want to see that you have um, awareness and empathy and a caring approach. I'm not dismissing that and please don't think I am, but I don't want you to think that's the most important. So we will be looking at those types of skills as well. We expect you to be non-judgmental and also culturally aware. We live in a very diverse and exciting world. Um, and we'd hope to see that you'd embrace this. The other thing that is quite important at the moment is, is being aware of what's going on in the NHS. It's very fast moving, as you're aware with, with COVID, things change very quickly. Um, but it's quite important to see that you understand how that has an effect on the area that you're looking at. So if you're looking at midwifery, how did, for example, how did COVID affect women who perhaps had to give birth alone or weren't allowed to take their partners to uh, um, appointments or, uh, inductions, all those kind of things. Likewise with uh, some of the, the mental health issues that have come out of isolation, particularly children and young people who've been isolated, haven't had normal friendships, social lives. So all these things are coming now to, out of COVID. We've got a lot of work to do around long COVID and what that means for people. So um, public health issues, contemporary issues will affect your nursing and midwifery practice. So it's good to show that you have an awareness of those as well. OK, so during the interview, why is it you want to study the subject? One of the questions we may ask is why have you decided that you want to be a nurse? And again, the answer to that is not I because I'm caring. What is it? Again, this will show that you've, you've really prepared for this and you know what's involved with nursing and midwifery. Why do you want to come to university? You're going to be there for three years. You're going to study and you're going to be in clinical practice. So you really have to be committed and aware to do this. It's always useful to make sure that you keep up to date with nursing and, and midwifery journals, such as the Nursing Standard, the British Journal of Midwifery or the Practicing Midwife. Quite a lot of these things are now available online as well. And um, often schools and colleges have uh, subscriptions to, to journals. Don't, don't be spending a lot of money on buying journals, but um, it's always worth, you know, websites, keeping up to date with things that are going on. Always lots of useful contacts on Twitter. If you're not already a Twitterer, it's a good way to get, get up to date with information. And again, as we talked earlier about policies which can affect your profession and the changes to the NHS. So one of the big changes in recent years has been the introduction of nursing associates or nursing apprenticeships and their role within the nursing and midwifery team. So that's worth seeing because it may be that you'd like to consider a nursing apprenticeship rather than a traditional nursing degree. So lots of, of information out there about 
policies which could affect the profession. Okay. So these are some of the areas that we would explore um, with you at interview. What is it about you do you think that would make a good nurse or midwife? What, what skills do you have? And I talked earlier about team building and uh, management skills, about interpersonal skills. Communication is, is such a key part of, of nursing midwifery. And that's not just about you talking, it's about listening, looking at nonverbal signs, really important. So start thinking about these skills in your school or college, or if you are working, look at your, your communication skills. Ask people, am I good at communication? Ask me what they, you know, what, what they would say are your positive aspects and then think about how you would represent those or maybe some of your less positive aspects, think about how you're gonna work on them. Again, we want to see genuine people skills, which are include caring and empathy. Um, we want to see that you're motivated, that you really want to do it. Um, you're committed and enthusiastic about your chosen career. Again, the recognition and understanding of diversity and inequality, which is really important. So do you, can you use your initiative? Are you good at being part of a team? Are you good at learning, guiding or being guided? And the next one I think as a nurse myself is a real key point. This is an absolutely essential skill. It's about problem solving and how you manage problems, how you deal with stress, how responsive you are. So when you're presented with a patient who who has particularly complex problems, you have those skills to, to start to learn how to deal with them. Obviously, timekeeping is, is really important because uh, it comes down to other nurses and midwives can't go home until you turn up, so we need to be on, on time. And are you reliable and are you dedicated to what you want to do? One of the things that we're really looking at as well is developing leadership and management skills because nurses are the leaders of the ward. Nurses take the, the lead in multidisciplinary teams. They lead the 24 hour care in care in uh, acute settings, in community settings, and we need to start developing your leadership and management skills. And our nursing and midwifery programs are designed to help that. So they build each year. So by you, by the time you come to your final placement as a midwifery student, you'll be managing your own births and taking the lead in that. As nursing students, you'll be managing a group of patients. And, and delegating tasks, making decisions, obviously under supervision, but these are the types of things that we're moving you towards. And again, complex decision making, which goes with your problem solving. So obviously we're not going to expect you to cover all of this at interview, but these are some of the things that we'll be looking for. So if you have a, um, I, I interviewed somebody recently who um, used to be an air hostess, if you're allowed to call them that. But anyway, she talked about the skills that she used in that, which was dealing with people, communication. You have to be caring. People are often frightened or, or ill on aeroplanes. Timekeeping. She had leadership and management skills. And these were all things that she could apply to nursing. So they're all transitional skills. They're all things that, that we would look for in a nurse that she could take from a previous role or a previous job. So it might not be you've had that type of experience, but you've had experience about the group work at college or school, Look at your role in a group. Do you sit back and listen and and make decisions, or do you are you happy to take the lead and 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 forge the way ahead with any decisions that are being made? So start really thinking about you and the skills that you have and how you're going to transfer those to you as a student nurse or midwife. Thanks, Natalie. So transferable skills. What what sort of things are we talking about when we're asking about this? As I said. You might have got them through work experience, you might have got them in previous study, um, you might have got them as being part of a voluntary thing, you perhaps, you know, you might work with young people in a setting, you might have volunteered at school for things, but think about what skills you have developed through that. So it could be delegation. Delegation is a very difficult skill, it's very difficult telling other people what to do. Um, so you have to think about how you, could, how you delegate sensitively and carefully and appropriately. Listening, a really key skill, how good are you at actually listening to what people say to you or are you listening to get your point across? So do you actually hear what they're saying or are you just waiting for your moment to get in there? And I think we're all guilty of that at times, but proper listening is actually just really taking on board what somebody's saying to you and thinking about what it is, the message they're trying to get across. And that's obviously part of your communication skills that um, you can demonstrate that you've heard what people are saying and that you understand what they're saying to you, but also that you can communicate clearly 
analytics is very important and you're probably covering this in some of your modules already but the ability to look at evidence look at information find out what it means what are they saying within that what are they not saying in it so um, it ties in with research because you're all going to be evidence-based practitioners all nurses and midwives uh, their practice is based on the evidence uh, from research so it's not just because you think it's a good idea it's because you know that these are tried and tested ways of, of performing certain things or um, for example when it comes to looking after somebody's wound we know what the best wound care is for a particular wound so it's not because you think it's a good idea it's because you know that the evidence is there to support you so we need to make sure as you go through your program that you know where to access evidence what you know how to read it what's good evidence so the analytical skills and your research skills are very important i've talked a bit about leadership motivation which can be tough sometimes it can be hard when you're, you you're on a stretch of shifts and you're having quite a tough time so you need to think about your motivation and it can be something quite simple to get you through your three years it could be thinking about you graduating it could be thinking about going to your graduation ceremony and walking across the stage or it could be about you know you as a nurse or you as a midwife it may be you've got family who are already qualified nurses or midwives and you want to be part of that so where's your motivation what is it that you want to do it may be your motivation is that you want a career and nursing is a career and midwifery you know it's a career with very clear progression so much opportunity when you qualify to work in in interesting areas so um as i said earlier the nhs careers website will show you how people have progressed in their career i started off as a, a student nurse and i didn't have any qualifications i only had some o levels and uh i was i was 23 when i started nursing and after I qualified, after a while I moved to London and I was a sister at the Royal Free for many years. And while I was there, I got my degree because in my day you didn't register and qualify the degree. And then I moved into teaching and I uh, joined the university. And uh, during that time, I've completed my teaching qualification. I've completed my master's and um, over a year ago, I, got, I qualified as an, with an academic doctorate. So I'm now a doctor and that's from somebody who left school with no qualifications. So. You know, and, and the best thing about it is that nursing has provided me with a career. It's given me a clinical career, but it's also now given me an academic career. And you will, when you meet nurses and midwives, they will always be studying, developing. They're looking at their next progression. So when you leave, leave university with your degree and you start working, the next thing you're going to be thinking about is, are you going to do your master's? And the work that you do academically towards your master's will support your clinical work so it may be that you've become very interested for example as a midwife you might become very interested in women who have diabetes so you will do uh, some studying about that you might write your um, dissertation your master's dissertation on that and then you might then become a specialist midwife for women with diabetes because you had then have that that knowledge um, so your academic and your clinical career will sit side by side and you'll find that when you're out on placement and you're talking to nurses, you're talking to midwives and they'll tell you that, oh, you know, I've just finished my master's or I'm just studying this course. Um, nurses and midwives are studying to prescribe medication. Um, we have a lot of nurse prescribers now. So there's always something for you to, to look forward to um, in your career about moving your career on, about where you want your career to go. Uh, so, you know, where your motivation comes from, it, you know, that will be very individual, but one of the main things I would suggest is that you, you will have a career. Transferable skills, time management is always a massively useful transferable skill. And if you know that you're the sort of person that writes their essay at, at midnight, the day before it's due to be handed in, you know you need to do some work on your time management skills. We're all guilty of it. We all set off at the start of each new term with new stationery and new pens, thinking you're going to be really organised, and then it gradually slips. If you know that, that's fine. Some people really can't work unless they know they're right up against a deadline. If you know that's the case, set your deadline a week earlier and then you know you've got a bit of wriggle room. Time management is really important, whatever you do in life. So, you know, just start being a bit more aware of, of your time management skills and your priorities. Now, your priorities will shift and change. And one of your priorities has to be you. It has to be your life and having a life outside your study and um your clinical work and you've probably become more aware of that over the last 18 months of lockdown that that ability to have a life outside has become quite challenging however 
you know you need you need to prioritize you sometimes sometimes you need to prioritize the fact you've got work to do sometimes you need to prioritize you've got to be on placement at seven o'clock in the morning so those shifting priorities along with your time management are really useful transferable skills okay so the interview um, at Middlesex, and I'm sure if you've asked some people, they'll tell you this. Everyone turns up for the interview anxious, nervous. Um, I think it's going to be really scary. And we've tried really hard to stop that. We've tried to be really friendly and welcoming and well, because we want to get the best out of you. We want you to feel relaxed and able to talk to us. And obviously this year, all our interviews have been via Zoom because we um, obviously were social distancing and that's fine. And it's it has its its place but it's quite nice for you to come and see the university as well we quite like to to introduce you to our, our facilities so what to expect during your interview um we have got a booklet for you that you can scan and we've also got if you go um all this will be sent to you after this presentation so you'll have a booklet and the link to watch a short video about nursing and midwifery interview preparation which is very much about what i've told you already So again, why, are you, why have you decided to be a nurse? And if your decision is that you want to be a nurse because your mother's a nurse, that's great. And, and you know, my mother's a nurse and, um, and takes full credit for my career, which is great. However, that's not enough because you need to make sure you really explore, again, your reasons for doing it. Talk to nurses if you know any. Um, find out about whether you talk to students if you know and you find out what what it's like being a student nurse come along to our open days whether they are virtual or, or real because we'll always have students nurses or midw midwives for you to talk to about what it's like um so again you know dig deep on that if if you really think you like working with children which is great um and lots of you've got experience of working with children or, or looking after siblings bear in mind that they are fit they're well Fit and well children are very different from sick children. Sick children are frightening. They become very poorly very quickly. Um, and sometimes it's not the child that you're looking after. It might be their siblings or parents that are frightened or scared. So your communication skills and your supportive skills are so important. If you're not sure what it means to look after a sick child, again, lots of things on YouTube. Go and look at a day in, in a paediatric ITU. Um, look at working with children on a cancer ward. These are all the things that you're going to be expected to do. Um, and very little of it is about, unfortunately, being with well children. It's about looking after very, very sick children. And I think, you know, you've got to be a very special person to do that. If you are thinking about children's nursing, well, bear in mind it goes up to the age of 18. So you're looking after teenagers. And often with teenagers, there's issues that you might be dealing with, such as um, mental health, self-harming, drug abuse. Um, sexual abuse, um, particularly in London, we have young people who get stabbed, drugs. These are all things that you will encounter. So children's nursing is about 0 to 18. And you will be looking after all of those throughout your three years as a student nurse. You may decide that's not what you want to do once you qualify, but you will be expected to care for uh, that age range during your time with us. Um, again, with midwifery, Midwifery is about working with women. It's not about working with babies. You have very limited interaction with the baby. Most of the time it is spent with, with women. So make sure that that's your reason for wanting to uh, become a midwife. So it's about supporting women, educating women, um, looking after them during their pregnancy. And uh, that means dealing with issues that might not be positive. So there could be, uh, you know, <laughs> women who don't want to be pregnant, women who are victims of abuse, there could be women who are not able to um, carry full term or, or women whose babies are born dead. These are all things that you will have to encounter. Not everybody is in a happy, stable relationship and not everybody wants to be pregnant. So again, please make sure you've explored all those types of issues. We have situations where babies are taken away by social services once they're born, and that's very distressing for everybody. But again, your position then is to be looking after the woman um, because you're a midwife and midwife means with woman. Next, please. Again, uh, I talked a bit about this, the knowledge and the understanding of the role. Very, very important that you really know what you're taking on. And um, and some of the, you know, the, not just the, the bad bits of it, because it can be challenging, 
but you know some of the really exciting interesting bits of it and you will have patients that you remember all your life i remember patients when i was a student when i was a staff nurse there will always be patients that stay with you so it's the great thing about nursing midwifery is it's fascinating and challenging and you're never bored but um please make sure you understand what you're, you're signing up for okay next one please i've talked a bit about this already so um you know workload time management so the students who are with us who do their midwifery and nursing programs with us you do your placement and your theory in blocks so you don't do one day in placement one day in the university you have a block of time in the university so the first period when you join us you'll have an induction period and then we spend the next few months um, doing introductions to nursing midwifery but making sure you're safe to go out in your clinical placement so we'll be teaching you skills within our um, augmented reality skills lab so if you get a chance have a look at those on our website and so we we teach you things like moving and handling cpr first aid for mental health there's some um uh issues about dealing with with sometimes patients who could be quite aggressive and um lots of, of interpersonal skills we teach you about the types of assessments you'll be carrying out and then you normally start your placement in January. Midwives, as I said, go out earlier. And um, you usually go for a block of four weeks or six weeks. And your final placement on the programme is 12 weeks long. And um, that gives you that real consolidation uh, and, and enables you to be what they call signed off. So your mentors, your supervisors in practice will then sign you off as being able to become a registered nurse. Ability to work as a team is really important. And, and um, one of the things that it, the ability to work as a team doesn't include is you have to like everybody. We're not expecting you to be one big happy family. What we're expecting you to be is professional. So you work with lots of different people. You'll work with a nursing team or a midwifery team. And that's within the multidisciplinary team. It's within the team within the hospital. You're part of a team at the university. So think very carefully about, you know, your role as a part of a team, what, you know, what is it you find enjoyable? What is it you find challenging? And even as a ward sister, I had people that I worked with that I found particularly challenging and they were my staff. It didn't mean I didn't like them. It just meant that I, I didn't have perhaps the connection that I had that I had with other people. And we all have that in life. We can't like everybody and not everyone's gonna like us. However, what we need to have is the ability to make sure that that's a professional relationship and recognizing we don't need to have a personal relationship with these people. So you cannot escape it you cannot work on your own even if you work as a community nurse or community midwife you'll still be expected to work as part of a team so look very closely at you and your what you like i mean most of us really enjoy being part of a team and uh you know sharing workloads being supported all those types of things that are really important uh, but you won't be able to escape it so start thinking very hard about how you how you work as a team player okay oh and interpersonal skills which go with that are really important as well so your communication skills your interpersonal skills uh the, some of the biggest challenges within nursing and mid, midwifery come when people don't communicate clearly and effectively and that's how things get missed or not carried out properly so make sure you think very clearly about that you know do you have good interpersonal skills ask your friends ask your family and also again make sure that you 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 have an understanding of diversity related to gender, race, culture, religion, sexual orientation, disability, because you're going to meet people, possibly in clinical practice, who will challenge your, your understanding and your views. And again, it's not about whether you like or dislike people, it's about your understanding, because you, you will be expected to treat uh, patients whose lifestyles you might not agree with and whose life choices you might not agree with. But that's not up to you to agree or disagree. It's about you about how you care for people. So. These are some of the things that may challenge you. Your own experience is important and your life skills are important. And we will, this will probably come through your personal statement as much as anything else. And one of the things I often find with personal statements is people talk a lot about the experience they have of caring or voluntary work or anything like that. Very few people talk about their academic work. And this is a degree program and 50% of it is spent studying to degree level. So, it's good to talk about your, your study skills, um, you know, talk about things you particularly enjoy, talk about things you might find challenging and how you've managed that. Um, that's part of your experience. And 
and part of your life skills and, and it is relevant because if you talk about how you've overcome challenges then it shows that you've recognized it as a challenge and you've put strategies in place to help you deal with it so that's something that you know we may call upon in your interview and we may pick up from your personal statement this is a difficult one because we can't really assess this. Um, but what I can say to you is, as I said earlier, you will be put into highly charged emotional situations. We can't stop that because it's part of what you're going to be doing. What we can do is offer you support and guidance. So we may explore difficult situations with you within the university. We may do it as part of a communications exercise, look at how you would deal with perhaps people being rude to you or being aggressive or one of the things in our skills labs is that we might put you into an emergency situation as part of a, a team of, of, of you and your colleagues. And, you know, we have, um, if you haven't seen them, we've got what's called Sim Man and we have Sim Midwife, Sim, uh, Sim Mother and Baby, and we have the Sim Babies as well. And we can control them so that they can start bleeding or they can start vomiting, or we can even slow the heart down. We can actually get them to die in front of you if you don't do the right things. And that can be very stressful and very challenging, even though it's, it's a, you know, an entirely made up situation, but that starts to help you get to think about how you will manage yourself. So we could stop the, the scenario, take it back and make it go a different way, depending on, on your interventions and how you manage it. Um, we all react differently with different situations. Some things we can manage, some things you know, just might be the final straw and we can't cope with it. That's absolutely fine. However, we don't expect you to, to fall apart in front of your patients if possible, but we will support you and we will look after you if, if things do get bad. We've got lots of um, counselling support, we have mental health support, we have support from the academic staff. You know, if you get in touch and say, I've had a really bad day on clinical practice, I need to talk to somebody, somebody will be there to talk to you. So the ability is not to not have emotional reactions. The ability is, as it says there, to cope. How can you cope with it? What is it that you need to do just to get yourself back on track? And we will support you in that. So people that don't cope effectively, as in they don't deal with it or they don't face up to it, that's not effective. You know, it's about facing up to things and looking at how you can best manage the situation. Okay. So there's some, this obviously, as we said, all this will be, will be sent out to you. So we have put some useful links in here for you. Um, so there's some click through. So there's, there's lots of stuff about our, our nursing midwifery. Uh, there's there about social work as well. And at the bottom th uh, there, you can see the photograph of our skills labs. And that's the augmented reality I was talking about with the headsets. So it, it'll be, you can actually see, and that's a midwifery student there, I think with a with the pregnant mother. And you can actually see the baby inside. You can see the baby being born, incredible stuff. So have a look when you get this, have a click through and look at our, our videos on YouTube. And there's further videos there about the university as well that might help you with decisions you're making. So I don't have anything else to tell you. I'm very happy to answer any questions you may have in the chat. Um, and I hope you found it useful. There's some more resources available there, another click and link for you. There's lots of information on our website. Um, if you do come up with any, any other further questions at that later date, think, oh, I wish I'd asked that. Uh, if you go onto our website, there's a box in the bottom right hand corner and you can see me there and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Caroline, do Hello. you want me to ask you the questions? Okay, so shall I read them out? Is that the best way to do it? Yeah, yeah, we can read them out. Do you want me to read them to you and then you answer them? Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so um, the first one here is, hey, um, on the midwifery course, is it possible to do work experience internationally? If so, do you get guidance with placements and etc.? Um, at the moment, I would say no, because of COVID. It's very difficult to send um, students abroad because at the moment we don't know what's happening. Also, Brexit stopped a lot of our, our placement agreements. So. It, it, normally, if, if you're going to do a placement abroad, it would be in your third year. So we're talking four years time. So I wouldn't want to promise anything at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, next question is, um, is there, um, yeah, the video will be um, available afterwards um, and you it will go on demand tomorrow straight onto YouTube. So you'll be able to watch it straight back tomorrow and you'll be sent a link anyway as well. Thank you. 
and then how many days how many does does it take for recording to be sent out in the next few days you'll get it as i just said um I've, i have five years work experience as a support worker and one year experience as a student nurse but my application was unsuccessful uh, stating that i've not got enough experience um i i don't know you reject people for not having enough experience if you say you've got one year experience as a student nurse, I'm wondering whether you applied for year two of our program. And at the moment, we don't have any place for year two students. Um, but I can't comment any further on that without without looking at your file. So you're very welcome to contact me um, and I can give you further feedback. Thank you. In the beginning, you talked about that uh, it's not a good idea to apply for both type uh, for different types of nursing. What if you've already applied for both types of nursing? Um, well, I would I, I don't know what to say to that because it depends where you've applied. If you've applied for us, your personal statement um, needs to cover what it is that you've applied for. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering how you've answered that question in your personal statement as to why you're applying for whatever yeah. uh, type of nursing it is you're applying for. And if you've applied to us or mm. um, somewhere else. Um, how long is the interview normally? The interviews are normally about, um, we allow half an hour for the interview because sometimes there might be questions that you'd like to ask um, and you're very welcome to ask anything you like during your interview. Um, sometimes we might spend a bit of time, you know, talking to something you put about you, something you've put on your personal statement that's particularly interesting or a career opportunity you've had. So um, we don't we don't time them in and time them up, but we allocate around half an hour. OK, and at the moment it's being done online. Yeah. yeah. Are you planning on going back to face to face? I, I don't know until the university tells me it's not my decision, unfortunately. OK. Thank you. Um, if you want to become a neonatal nurse, would I have to qualify as a child nurse first? It depends. Some people, um, I've asked my child colleagues this, some say child, some say adult. Um, I think most vacancies as neonatal nurses, they look at you having a registration as a nurse, either child or adult. Okay, thank you. Um, is there an upper age limit to becoming no. a nurse or a midwife? I wasn't allowed to have upper age limits, that's illegal, so no. And we have students who are, um, we've been interviewing people who are 50 to 60, so no, there's no upper age limit. Mm -hmm. You just have to be um, fit to practice, don't you, Caroline? Yeah, you, know, you have to pass your occupational health um, assessment. Um, how are the midwifery exams assigned theory work? Um, we, we use a variety of assessments throughout um, your three years. 50% um, of your of your assessments are in clinical practice, so you're assessed by registered midwives um, and you have to complete what's called a practice assessment document and you'll have one of those for each year. Um, so, we, and then you'll have essays. I think there's possibly one exam in midwifery, but we have different types of exams. So we have, we have presentations, you might be asked to demonstrate a clinical skill. Um, so we, we try not to be too reliant on either essays or exams. Thank you. Um, is it possible to get an unconditional offer? If so, how? We, we don't make unconditional offers. Um, all our offers are conditional because they include things like your occupational health and your DBS. Um, what we are doing at the moment is looking at people who already have their existing qualifications and they are now becoming unconditional. Thank you. I'm currently working full time in security, been doing this for 10 years. I would like to apply for mental health nursing. How comfortable how comfortable is going how comfortable is it going from working to studying well my only concern about that is your academic qualifications because we would need your qualifications to be within the last five years um so therefore you would need to have been studying in the last five years however for students who are an anxious about coming to university there's lots of support available for you with your study skills um so we have we have um, academic advisors to help you we have people available in the library to help with things like literature searching, IT problems. So there's lots of support we recognise for quite a lot of people coming back into studies quite um, stressful. So we have lots of support available for you for that. OK, thank you. Do you accept functional skills in English? Yes, level two. Thank you. Do you recommend talking about, um, do 
what do you recommend talking about on your personal statement for midwifery? Um, well, one thing I would suggest you don't talk about is don't mention call the midwife or one born every minute. What you need to show is that you have an understanding of the challenges of the programme, about why you have decided you'd like to be a midwife, um, about a bit about you know your journey to where you are now. It's very difficult to say um, without really being knowing your background. If you're studying, talk a bit about what you're studying, any examples you have of working with women um, or working as part of a team or working with people, um, which again comes down to your transferable skills, which are really useful. Um, so it would just be, you know, and, and lots of people spend a lot of time going on about the wonders of birth and, and all that, and that's really not relevant. You know, it's about you as a person and the skills that you're gonna be bringing to the program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How many places do we have for children's nursing and, um, and adult nursing? Uh, well, our overall nursing and midwifery contract is around 450. Um, I'm going to, I am coming in as an undergraduate student. Do I need to have a, cl to have clinical experience? No, no, um, we don't expect people to have clinical experience. It's very difficult for, particularly for younger people to get clinical experience, but we would like you to talk about any experience you do have of, of working as part of a team or working with the public, anything like that would be useful. Thank you. Um, is, there, is it possible to receive a deferred entry? No, we don't do deferred entries for, for the programme because our numbers situation is so tricky to manage. So we would ask you to apply for the year where you wish to study. When are we able to get your decision when you apply? Um, when, uh, when are we able to get your decision when you applied via UCAS? Uh, well, fairly quickly, because I, I, as far as I know, all the shortlisting is up to date. Mm -hmm. So you should, so if you're talking about an invitation to interview, um, at the moment, they're coming through very quickly. But normally you, you'd get your decision from us within about um, seven working days about a, a, about a shortlisting decision. As I, I studied assistant nursing in Greece, and at the moment I do work as a healthcare assistant. What do I need to do to work as a nurse? Do I have to study three years nursing or is it possible to do a course to top up my knowledge? You'd have to do the three years because we haven't got a, um, a transitional programme for assistant nurses. So um, yes, you, you would have to do the full three years degree. Mm -hmm. But if they're a healthcare assistant currently working in the NHS, maybe they may be able to apply for the apprenticeship route? Yeah, talk to your, talk to your education lead in your trust and ask whether you could be put forward for that. If you don't get the grades, will you be considered on the course? Depends on the course and depends on the grades. It's a bit of a piece of string question, that one. How do I, um, can I do a foundation course first before studying for mental health nursing? We, we don't offer a foundation course and we would always recommend an access to nursing course and you can do those at your local college or there's some good online access courses that we take as well. Okay and then the final question we have at the moment is I've, I've, I have attended university previously and looking into a different career path. I have 112 UCAS points. Will my um, previous degree be considered? Yes, we would consider your degree as, as your entry qualifications, as long as it's not more than five years old. Mm -hmm. And you've got the GCSEs as well. Yeah, level two maths and English. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted a qualification in midwifery and nursing, is it possible to do a top, top up year where studying one? Uh, at the moment, uh, if you want to be, you, if you want registration in both, the route that we offer is you'd have to do your three year nursing degree in adult nursing. And then we have a shortened midwifery program, which is uh, 20 months. Um, and uh, you get an employment, you get paid as a, a band five staff nurse while you do the top up program. However, we have no idea how much longer that program will last um, because it's funded differently to um, a normal nursing midwifery program. So it's still open at the moment and we're still running it, but who knows? Mm -hmm. So does anybody else have any more questions they'd like to ask? Any more questions? Um, 
we have lots of useful information on our web pages and on YouTube. So you'll be able to watch all of this back and all find all the other information out. Hang on, okay. we've got one question. Graduated May 2016. Yeah, um, and I'm starting, this is the I, I think we, I think we, we'd possibly be, we'd consider that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I would be saying to you is um, make sure you've listed all your qualifications you have, including your level two, level three, and if you've yeah. got a degree on there, and what you've been doing for the last five years as well. What percentage of people from their placements go on to secure a job? Um, well, I would say to you that there's 100% employment for nurses if you want it. Um, so our trusts say that if they have, if you've done a final placement with them and passed, you're guaranteed an interview. Mm -hmm. But it's it's certainly a buyer's market for nurses out there. There's there's no problems with with finding work. Um, is there any more questions? But as Caroline just um, mentioned to you, if you go to the course pages, you'll see um, Unibody at the bottom there and you can ask um, a course question there. And it usually would be Caroline that will get that question and we'll be able to answer that for you. So please feel free, you know, if, you've, if there's something you, you think about based to come and you think, oh, we should ask that, please come and ask it. You know, there's no such thing as a stupid question because either if I can't answer it, I'll tell you I can't answer it. But, you know, we're, we're happy to help. So, um, you know if you've got if you've got qualifications questions or uh there's something on the website and you, you'd like some more information about it then please you know do come and ask us that's, that's what can, I, can i just ask the audience a question um is there anybody out there thinking of applying for 2021 still there are still um um some places left and i think it's adult nursing and children's nursing yeah. so you are able to apply now and yeah, if you're in extra and yes. you haven't applied to us, please um, make that as a choice because uh, UCAS is still open in extra t today. Yeah. The last day, actually, before clearing. So please, you know, if you'd like to, then please feel free to apply. Is there any more questions? I think that's it, Caroline. All right, well, thank you very much for coming and I wish you all every success oh, hey, in your career. Oh, one more question. Oh. What month is applications open? Okay, UCAS is open now for 2022. So you can start by creating your UCAS hub account, it's called now. And then you start your application now, do your research. The first applications that come into universities and is mid-September is when they start to come through to us. But if you're applying with your school or college, you need to work with their deadlines, is what I'll be saying to you. Uh, if you don't have all the, the entry questions, but you have been working, okay. no, you, you still ne need to have a minimum entry requirements, which is what Caroline spoke about with um, having a 120 UCAS points. What I'd be saying is maybe contact your local college to get a level three qualification. Or again, if you're working in a trust, you might want to talk to your education lead about um, nursing apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. Will the interviews be, when will the interviews be for 2022 applicant? applicants will they be in person i don't know at the moment um i would like to think they would because i think it's important but it's about uh rules and regulations i have to follow the government rules and regulations on social distancing which is very difficult in an interview situation so it's about keeping you safe and keeping the staff safe so um if we can we would like to invite you in if we can't when we will do it via zoom thank you um yeah um, thank you for joining us this evening. As I said, everything will be shared with you um, later. Um, and thank you, for Caroline, and um, look forward to seeing you again soon, everybody. Good luck. Thank you.